Are you looking to level up your home office setup? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm going to share with you my home office setup that I use for telehealth, podcasting, and YouTube content creation just like this. I'm going to share with you how I transformed my home office from a dinner tray and a laptop to what I use today. All right, so stick around and hopefully I can bring some value. Let's go. back to the Mental Health Toolbox. I'm Patrick Martin, your host, and if you're just meeting me for the first time, I'm a therapist by trade, and I'm on a mission to help share valuable coping skills and practical advice that I've learned in my own journey of self-improvement. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you my home office setup, um, because if you're like me, this pandemic has been uh, quite an interesting time of uh, rearranging the home life and making things work. So it's been a bit of a process for me, and figuring out how to make the, the home office setup evolve into a functional workstation. All right, so I'll be sharing with you the different items, products that I use in my workflow, and hopefully you can gain some value from what I share. All right, so let's get started. All right, so the first thing I would like to share with you is lighting. So if there's anything we know about video and home office, telehealth work, uh, video content creation, it is audio. Video and lighting are the three main uh, cornerstones, right? And so the first thing I want to talk to you about is lighting. So I know there's a lot of lighting options out there on Amazon. I can only speak from personal experience. I use a ring light, and I'm sure you're familiar with those. They're like the, the circle things that shine on your face, like the one I have now. Um, but the thing I like about my ring light a lot is that it's dimmable. It was actually recommended by a uh, another online therapist who uh, is kind of her main thing. She's all about online therapy, telehealth, before it was had as much attention as it does now with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's forced most therapists, if not all therapists, into online work. So I was a little ahead of the curve, uh, started using uh, telehealth uh, but just before the pandemic set in. So um, I did a lot of research. Uh, Amber Elida, uh, shout out to her, is the... Uh, guru that I gravitated toward, and she suggested the newer ring light, most importantly because it's dimmable. And it's important that you can dim the light, so A, you're not blinding yourself, but also if you're doing video because the lighting changes from daytime to nighttime. So it's important that you're able to adjust for the lighting uh, in the room, and uh, it really does make a big difference in terms of the picture quality, okay? Um, so I do recommend the newer ring light. It comes with a stand and equipment. You can even change um, the plastic covers on the light for the different kind of shading, warm light, etc. So I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, so check that out. All right, so next up we have video. So what I use is the Logitech C920 HD Pro webcam with a privacy shutter. I think it should be mentioned that these little webcams um, are decent, but you can give them a little boost with an app called Webcam Settings. Um, after many YouTube searches, I found uh, out how to tweak the settings on the webcam with a simple free application. And let me tell you, it's been nice because you can actually do presets for daytime, different applications like Zoom. You can tweak the, uh, the focus, the zoom, the, the white balance, all that good stuff. And so it's really nice because then you can just do a quick toggle. You can favorite some settings. And that way, if you're um, toggling from like Zoom to a telehealth platform or, you know, other types of video, uh, you can just kind of switch it around based on your, your preset settings that you've already played around with. So I like the webcam settings app in combination with the Logitech C920. That's been uh, a really solid video source for me. Uh, I, I'm a Mac user, so as you know, a lot of the Macs um, still use the old 720 uh, cameras, and that's just not really up to par, especially with all of the you know, options we have today. So if you can still get your hands on one, the Logitech C920 is a handy choice. A lot of the cameras are selling out given uh, the pandemic and the high demand for video technology. Now, webcams are really good for quick plug-and-play, 
Zoom meetings, telehealth, that kind of thing. If you're doing any kind of video content creation and you want to step up your video, um, like I did, you can always step up to a dedicated camera that has a, um, a larger sensor than maybe your, your smartphone or your webcam has. Um, that gives you a lot more uh, depth, uh, depth of field, depending on what kind of lens you're using. Um, I went with a Canon M50 mirrorless vlogging camera because of a couple of reasons. It was recommended by Sean Cannell and Think Media. So I did a lot of YouTubing on his channel, a lot of searching. Um, and this is the camera that was affordable, middle of the road, um, starter kind of quality camera. But the reason he recommends it and the reason I love it is because it has the flippy screen, which I'm using right now as I make this video because I can actually see myself and it has autofocus, right? So that the box, regardless of how I move around, it stays on my face and it continues to autofocus uh, in real time, which is wonderful. Um, in addition to that, you can also change out some of the lenses. So I stepped up my camera to a Canon uh, 22 millimeter prime lens, as they say, it's the pancake lens, but that gives me a wider view. It also gives me more depth of field. So you'll notice the background is probably a little more blurry. Um, and that kind of adds to the crispness of the the video. Okay. A couple other things I really like about using a Canon uh, dedicated camera is you can also get a battery pack that gives it endless battery life. And that allows me to, for example, you know, if an hour long therapy session, you know, I don't have to worry about the battery dying. If I'm doing a lot of recording uh, for YouTube, I don't have to worry about the battery dying. So the, the, the ability to just plug into a wall outlet and have endless battery is a really nice, uh, Nice option. Okay, so one other feature I really like uh, about the Canon cameras is that Canon now allows you to use your dedicated camera as a web cam. And this rolled out uh, a few months into the pandemic, mostly for PCs, and the Mac version has been in beta up until last week. I think they actually rolled out, uh, I think it was last week, they actually rolled out the full version for the Mac. So I'm excited to try that out. Um, but basically allows you just to plug a USB cable into your Canon camera and it functions as a webcam, which will level up your quality of video for things like telehealth, Zoom, um, online meetings, that kind of thing. So more than just, uh, you know, regular video. Prior to that, you had to use something called a capture card, which I tried. I uh, had a capture card, but the problem is um, I, I wasn't able, it wasn't a clean HDMI out which basically means I wasn't uh, able to get rid of the autofocus square around my face, um, which is one of the main reasons of having a dedicated camera. So props to Canon for doing that. All right, another thing if you are going to go with a dedicated camera that I strongly recommend is a decent tabletop tripod. Um, the one I use is the newer brand, just like the ring light I mentioned, N-E-E-W-E-R, newer tabletop tripod. And that um, that just kind of lives behind my external monitor and allows me to uh, position my camera just so, um, as a webcam would, you know, typically sit on top of the monitor. This allows me to um, raise the camera right behind my monitor and get a good eye level view of the lens, all right? It's also very portable, and if you collapse it, it makes a really good um, means of holding the camera if you're doing any kind of vlogging or video work out, you know, away from the desk, all right? Next up, we have the external monitor, okay? And I know there are a lot of options for external monitors. I don't uh, claim to be any expert in this regard, um, but I did do a fair amount of research and I know Apple recommends a higher low, you know, higher class monitor, 5K. Um, it's a little pricey. I think it's in the $2,000 range. I was able to um, find the LG monitor I'm using right now. It's a 27 inch 4K UHD IPS monitor. Um, and I have been using it for close to a year now and I absolutely love it. Um, it plugs right into my old MacBook Air, 2015 MacBook Air that I'm still running. No issues, um, along with the, the cable that I use, the mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable. And I put a link in the, 
the description of that as well if you're running an old laptop like myself. Um, but it you know gives a really clean feed. I don't have any issues with plug and play. Uh, plug it in and it's good to go. As long as the, the computer is plugged into a power source, it syncs right up and I don't have any issues with resolution or changing the resolution or anything like that to get a nice picture. So it definitely makes my workflow easier um, all around having a dedicated desktop external monitor, right? Um, all right, and moving on. So the next thing I recommend uh, for the home office, my home office setup is the external keyboard. Now, um, I actually purchased this a while back. I used a Jellycomb wireless keyboard um, and mouse combo. And this thing has been tried and true. I think I've only had to charge it three times and I've had it well over a year now. Um, and it just keeps trucking along. I really like the feel of the keys um, as well as the style and especially because it has the full number pad on the right side. So it just types really nice. I know there's probably some uh, you know, really nice backlit keyboards out there. Apple has their own Magic Keyboard, which I haven't tried, but I will attest to the Jellycomb. I really do like it. Um, I recently transitioned away from the actual mouse, external mouse, and moved toward a Apple Magic Trackpad 2, uh, mostly because I am a Mac user. The Magic Trackpad allows me to use the finger gestures that I'm accustomed to, um, for quick uh, navigation, especially video editing, that kind of thing. It's just very native to me since that's what I'm used to. And uh, it's actually made my workflow much nicer and it's been kinder to my wrist, you know, as opposed to the traditional mouse. So if you're a Mac user, you may find that the Apple Magic Trackpad 2 suits you well um, as well. Okay. Uh, another thing I recommend is uh, AirPods. I wasn't an AirPod user. I'd never tried AirPods up until, uh, I'd say about a, yeah, last Christmas is when I got them. Um, and I had no idea. If I had known how handy AirPods were, believe me, I would have been using them when they first rolled out. Um, I know they have the iPod, uh, sorry, AirPod Pros out now. It's just not something I've tried, but I have the classic AirPods with the, the charging case. And let me tell you, these things are a godsend. I, uh, practically live with these in my ear, being a podcast addict myself. I always have uh, Pat Flynn or Sean Cannell or somebody else in my ear via podcast uh, when I'm doing the dishes, laundry, but especially during the work day because I do uh, telehealth work from home and a lot of what I do is via telephone. So phone sessions uh, in addition to video sessions. And so um, I, I have an you know AirPod in my my ears going 10, 15 hours a day sometimes, and these things just never quit. And I, you know, they're very inattrusive, you know, very non-intrusive and uh, very handy. So must say I love my AirPods. I think you will too. If you haven't tried them, I know there's, again, a lot of other options out there, but for the, you know, the price range and the functionality, you know, I just think they're a wonderful, wonderful product. Um, so if you do a lot of telephone work, headset work, I do recommend trying out, um, AirPods. Okay. All right. So moving on to uh, another major feature of the home office setup, especially if you're into any kind of video production or podcasting, um, like I've been dabbling in, um, you have some options. So the, the mic I started off with, which actually there were a couple um, were USB XLR microphones, meaning they would function both as USB and XLR microphones. And one of the ones that are highly recommended um, by Pat Flynn, who's kind of the guru on pat podcasting, is the Audio Technica. If you can still find this guy, I'm sure you can. Uh, it's nice because if you're just starting off and you just need something simple for uh, improved audio, uh, it has a USB option, so you can just plug it right into your laptop and you're good to go. Um, no issues. And then when you're ready to level up your audio, after you've had some experience, if that's something you want to do, you can um, get an XLR. It comes with an XLR cable and it plugs right in there. And then all you need to add is an audio interface. It also has a headphone jack if you're using the, the USB functionality. And then you can monitor yourself while you're using it. Very handy. So 
I do recommend if you're starting off uh, with a microphone and you want something affordable, a USB slash XLR microphone that you can that can grow with you is really helpful. I do recommend the Audio Technica, and this one is the ATR twenty one hundred USB microphone. But they have other options out there as well. I'll put some links in the description, of course. Um, and once you uh, are ready to move up from there, the next quality microphone you'd probably want to get is the Shure SM58. These are um, both dynamic microphones, both Audio-Technica and the Shure. And the reason I like dynamic microphones is because they block out ambient background noise. You kind of have to get really up in the microphone like I am right now. Um, but the nice thing about that, I have kids, I have dogs. Um, there's always some noise going on in the background, and this allows me to have to worry less about filtering out that ambient noise, uh, background noise when I'm in the uh, editing, uh, if I'm doing any kind of video. And if I'm in a therapy session, for sure, because as a therapist, I really don't want to, in, you know, intrude in the session on the person's privacy anymore or make them feel any more uncomfortable than they may already, especially in light of telehealth. So uh, I like the dynamic microphones. Very handy. So I really like the uh, the options with the USB as well as the XLR microphones. The Shure SM58 dynamic microphone has been around for ages. It's, it's a classic um, this is what they use on stages for professionals. Uh, and it's uh, fairly affordable. I think it's about $100 when I, when I purchased mine. Um, and it works pretty well with just a standard audio interface. I use the Scarlett Focusrite 2i2. Um, and if you step up from there to what I'm currently using, which is the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, that is about a $400 microphone, but that is studio quality. So if you're going to be any kind of, uh, if you really want the best quality sound, you're probably looking at something like the Shure SM7B. And uh, in addition to the audio interface that I use, the Scarlett 2i2, which is basically what the microphone runs through between your microphone and your computer, it, um, these microphones need a little extra boost. So... Uh, in that event, you would need something that's called a microphone activator, and I use something called a cloud lifter. So this prevents you from having to crank the gain all the way up on the interface, which can distort the volume a bit. So my current combination is the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface and the microphone activator which is the Cloud Lifter CL1. Now, the CL, CL1 just means that it, it'll accommodate one microphone. And the on the interface, the Focusrite 2i2, that means you can plug two microphones into it. If you have a 4i4, that means you can plug four microphones, etc. I think they have them go up to eight microphones. So, But for my purposes, uh, my setup is fine. I'm sure it is for you, too, if it's just you or maybe you and one other person. Okay, so I'm currently using the Shure SM7B dynamic microphone, the Focusrite 2i2, and the Cloud uh, Cloud Lifter CL1 for the microphone. All right. Now, one other thing uh, to consider when you are using professional microphones as opposed to just the mic built into your laptop um, or your AirPods, for example, um, is how you're going to support the microphone, right? So I started off with something called a desktop microphone stand, and I, I really loved it. It was the on-stage adjustable uh, microphone stand, and it's nice because it's very weighted, and if you don't have anywhere to attach your boom arm, for example, to the, uh, to the desk, or if it's just not practical, then a desktop microphone stand is, is handy because it's you can just move it around wherever you need it if you've got the desk, desk space. Um, I recently moved up to the Rode PSA1 swivel mount studio microphone. It's a uh, boom arm. And this is nice because you can either mount it to the side of the desk 
or you can actually mount it through the desk. It comes with the you know the equipment for both options. If you're going to put it through the the you know the top of the desk somewhere, I think you do have to drill a hole. But it's not something I've had to encounter. I just was able to mount it to the back of the desk, no problem whatsoever, and um, it's been very very uh, reliable. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so if you're interested in a boom arm, I do recommend that one. All right, and when it comes to holding your phone. Um, I prefer to use a wireless charging station of sorts at my work desk. And so I'm very fond of the Anchor wireless charger, the PowerWave 7.5 stand. It's nice because it actually stands your phone up while you're working so you don't have to lean over or pick your phone up in the middle of your workflow to see if you have any notifications that may be of importance. Um, I feel like those small things do make a difference in my workflow. I also have the flat charging stations, which I use sometimes, but I'm, I'm really fond of the, the Anchor uh, PowerWave 7.5 stand. It's been going strong for years. I haven't had any issue. Um, I do recommend that. All right, and um, some other considerations with your home office setup. It, you know, if you're, if you're like me and a Mac user, one thing you might suffer on is ports and what I have found to be some some easy solutions uh, are the Anchor 4 port USB hub, and it's uh, fairly cheap, and it just, it gives you four extra uh, USB ports, USB you know 3.0 ports. Um, since I'm running an old Mac, oldish 2015, it gives me all the ports I need for my audio interface, my microphone. Um, the monitor, anything I need to plug in, I'm good. And uh, yeah, no issues, external hard drive. I, I just love it. it. hasn't given me any issues, any hiccups so far, and I've had it probably about, I don't know, six to eight months now. So um, no issues there. If you want, you can always step up your you know port game and go with something like the CalDigit TS3 Plus Thunderbolt 3 dock, and that'll give you um, all of the ports you need. I'm... I'm going to probably grab this once I move up with my computer. I'm holding out. I know Mac just rolled out with the M1 processor Max, and I'm really excited about that. I'm actually uh, saving my pennies for the 16-inch or 14-inch MacBook Pro when that rolls out, and then I know I'm going to be more limited and uh, on my ports, and everything will be Thunderbolt 3. So I'll probably end up grabbing that CalDigit port uh, dock when that happens. Probably, I'm, I'm guessing, June or by next fall when that rolls out. So, uh, all right. The next thing to consider is an external hard drive. So if you're uh, just doing telehealth, home office work, maybe disk space isn't an issue for you. But if you are like me and you do any kind of video creation or video work, uh, you probably don't use the hard drive on your laptop to store all your videos because that'll take up space real quick. So something I've invested in is an external hard drive. So uh, the one I'm currently using is the Samsung T5 portable solid state drive, two terabytes. And um, that's running right now about $230 on Amazon. I just got mine on uh, sale but I think normally they run about 270. But I do recommend you get a good solid state external hard drive. Um, if you get a, a decent speed, um, I'm currently using 540 megabytes a second. Uh, it's caused no issue for me in terms of lag or anything like that. And I do video editing and whatnot, so no complaints on that end. Uh, as far as cleaning up your desk space and freeing up room, um, I... Uh, tried out this 12 self book arc uh, for my MacBook. And basically what that does is that just props my MacBook up and keeps it out of the way. And it's amazing how something so simple can actually really make a difference. Because before I was trying to lay my MacBook in front of my monitor, in front of the keyboard, and my desk is like 25 inches deep and not 30. And so it was creating a bit of obstruction and just wasn't wasn't feeling good. So I went and got this guy, and it's been actually really, really nice because then I can just slide it right between my boom arm 
and my monitor and it just frees up a lot of space and feels good and the ports are really accessible that way. So very happy with that. Again, that was another recommendation by Think Media and Sean Cannell. So shout out to, to Sean for that. All right. So uh, almost to a close here, a couple other things I do want to mention um, are the chair, the portfolio, footrest, and fan, and of course, a pin. So these are the other kind of maybe ancillary things that you may not come to top of mind when you're thinking about home office setup or workflow. But um, I think a little goes a long way in terms of ergonomic uh, friendliness, you know, for your back, for your neck, um, shoulders, all that good stuff. And so I'm, I'm a recliner. I like to recline when I'm talking oftentimes when I'm thinking, you know, I do that, you know, so I do a lot of work on the phone. It's actually um, really important to me to have a, a chair that reclines. And I actually purchased the Glitz Home Adjustable High Back Office Chair. Um about a year and a half ago, a year ago, um, and I really love it. It's uh, very comfortable. I like the arms because they're, you know, nice and relaxed, low low to the waist, and uh, the chair's uh, easy to, to swivel back, and I haven't had any issues with it at all. So I do recommend the Glitz Home Adjustable High Back Office Chair if that's, you know, if you're in the market for a chair. I've had no issue with it. Um, another item that I just, you know, could rave about, is the Alpine Swiss Genuine Leather Riding Portfolio. I have actually loved this thing so much. I purchased it, um, my first one, is by Swiss Army, and I purchased my first portfolio from them back in 2011. Yeah, 2000, I'm sorry, 2011, yeah. And that was uh, such a nice portfolio that I ended up getting a second one for my home, and I still use both to this day, and I, you know, they've held up, you know, gee... Was it nine years now without any issue? And so for, uh, I think they run about $50 now. You have to check, but I'll put a link in the description. The Alpine Swiss uh, portfolio is just a really nice uh, addition to your home office. I do a lot of handwriting, obviously, as a therapist. I take a lot of notes. And so um, I really just come to love these portfolios. Um, and in the same vein, you know, I think it's good to have a good pen. And I uh, highly recommend the Cross Pens. I currently use the Cross Classic Century Pen. It's a ballpoint pen. And uh, I'll put that in the description as well. But I think a good pen and a good portfolio, if you're uh, doing any kind of therapy work or taking regular notes, <clears throat> goes a long way. All right? Um, and just a couple last items here. Um, I recently purchased the Eureka Ergonomic Tilt and Adjustable Footrest. Um, to keep under the desk just to make sure I'm, you know, keeping everything ergonomic, uh, especially as I, I adjust my chair a lot depending on what I'm doing and how I'm feeling. So it's nice to have the, the option to keep my feet nice and level. And uh, that's a, a cheap way to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, all right? And lastly, uh, I think it's really important to have a fan, you know, in the room. If you're doing a lot of home office work, you know, the temperature fluctuates. If you're using any kind of additional lighting, like a ring light for videos or, or telehealth, things can heat up pretty quick. So I do recommend that you use uh, an oscillating fan. I'm a bit, I've been using just what we have around the house. It's a Lasco portable electric oscillating tower. Um, I love this thing. It's, it's quiet. You can adjust the speed on it, and it keeps things nice and cool while I'm going about my work day. So no complaints there. But I do think it's important to have a fan and that you're doing what you can to be comfortable in your workplace because um, your physical comfort goes a long way in terms of your distress tolerance, your mental health. So comfy clothes, comfy chair, comfy temperature, all important things. Okay. So I hope you found this helpful just to, you know, recap, you know, we covered lighting, video, audio, external monitors, keyboards, mouse, uh, and then some additional luxuries. And I hope that uh, you found this helpful. You can find all of these items that I've covered uh, just by going over to mhtgear.com. That's mhtgear.com. I will also put all the links there in the description for you. Um, so please let me know. Uh, if there's anything else that you think should be on this list, please uh, put it in the comments. Let me know. Uh, and I'll take a look at it. And I'll be sure to add it. Check it out myself. 
And then if you find this uh, information helpful, please do share it with anyone else that you know might be in the market to uh, vamp up their home office. It looks like this pandemic is going to last, oh, gee, who knows, another six, seven, eight months. So if you haven't given a little upgrade to your home office, maybe now is the time. It is uh, Cyber Monday today that I'm making this video, so I'm sure the sales will be going on for a while. And uh, yeah, so as always, uh, more tools for your toolbox. I want you to go make good things happen. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, I think it's important to have a furry friend. You know, we uh, have a couple dogs, recently got a puppy, and it uh, just makes the home office life all that much better. So, um, you know. I'm all for furry friends. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, do share, like, and subscribe if you haven't already, if you find this helpful. And uh, keep thriving. Bye-bye now.